We sit at the piano for hours and hours, but when was the last time you thought about how you sit at the piano? I'm Dr. Cape Boy. Today, I'm gonna to talk about sitting at the piano. I'm gonna share with you my tips and best practices on how to sit at the piano and find the height and distance from the piano that is optimal for you. So let's get started. I'm gonna start off by talking about how high you should sit at the piano with relation to the keys. Now the purpose of finding the optimal height to sit at is in order to maximize your own comfort at the piano. It is not necessarily the case that if you sit at the wrong height for you that you will become injured or some other horrible thing will happen. It's just gonna make playing much easier and more comfortable to find that optimal height. So first, let's figure out how high your bench should be. This will vary from person to person depending on the relationship between the length of your torso and the length of your arms. I'm gonna assume that you have an adjustable bench. I will talk later in this video about what to do if your bench is not adjustable. Now, before we get too far into this topic, I wanna to start off by saying that different pianists and different teachers have wildly different opinions about how high you should sit at the piano. So what I'm talking about in this video are principles that I have found work for me and work for my students. Also, I work almost exclusively with adults now. And so what I'm talking about relates to adults sitting at the piano. I'm not addressing the way children should sit at the piano because that has its own set of parameters and needs for young children who may not even be able to touch the floor with their feet. Now, if you look at videos of concert pianists playing the piano, you will notice that they sit at varying heights with relation to the keyboard. Glenn Gould very famously sat extremely low and so low that he sawed the legs off of a, of a chair and he carried it around with him because there were no piano benches that went that low. Arthur Rubenstein sat quite high compared to most pianists. Those who advocate sitting low say that the advantage is that you don't have to push the keys down from above. Those who sit on the higher side say that the advantage of being above the keys is that you are able to relax into the keys and you have leverage from above. So what I'm saying is it's pretty personal and you're gonna have to experiment to find the right height for you. That said, there is one rough guideline that seems to work quite well for my students and that a lot of teachers espouse and that is playing with a flat arm from your elbow to your fingertip. So if you aren't sure how high to sit, then I recommend starting from that point with a flat arm from your elbow to your fingertip with your fingers on the keys and then experimenting from there. So here's how to measure the correct bench height for you. First of all, sit at the piano, relax your shoulders, make sure that your shoulders are loose and not tight. Lift your arms to the keys and we're gonna play a fifth in each hand. I'm gonna play C and G, C and G in both hands. And what you want is you want there to be a straight line between your elbow and the keys. Now my arms are relatively long and therefore I tend to sit on the higher side in order to get that straight line. To find the right height for you, you can use a mirror or you can take your cell phone and put it on selfie, but make sure it's at the correct angle because it's really hard to tell if you're coming at it from above or below. Once you've taken a video or a picture of yourself playing the piano from the side, you just look at the angle of your elbow. If your elbow is hanging down like this, then that means you can try experimenting with raising the bench height. If you're finding that your angle of your elbow is down more like this, then that'll be a chance to try to lower the height of the bench. Now, if you have a fixed bench, then you're gonna probably need to try to find something lower to sit on and reject that bench. If you're playing a non-acoustic instrument, if you're playing an electronic instrument, then what you can also try if you have a fixed bench is changing the height of the instrument. You can change the height of the rack that the instrument is on in order to get that optimal relationship between the bench height and your flat arm from the elbow to the fingers. It's totally fine if you're sitting a little bit higher in order to get that as long as your feet are able to comfortably reach the pedal. Now, if you want to adjust your bench height and your bench is fixed and cannot be adjusted up or down, Obviously, short of sawing the legs off of your bench, you can only really 
adjust it to sit higher. So I suggest starting off with a bench that's low enough that you can then adjust it to sit higher. Now, when it comes to trying to raise the height of the bench by putting things on top of it, I have a few suggestions. First of all, avoid sitting on stacks of books or on soft cushions like this because we need to have a firm foundation to sit on at the piano and a cushion is just kind of mushy and books can slide around. One thing that I found to be really helpful and that a lot of pianists seem to use, I think it's kind of made its way across the world of playing the piano, are these foam tiles. These are, were I think originally designed to, to, to fit together and make like um, a, a kind of a playing surface for children or um, to cover a floor, but these you can just stack up at the piano and they're nice and firm and you can get a bunch of them and stack them up to the height that you need. Another option would be to take a board and put it under your bench and you could like make sure it's just thick enough, like it could be a half inch or three quarters of an inch thick, or you could even put casters under the legs of your chair or bench. For several years when I was living in Germany, I didn't have a proper piano bench. I rented a piano and it didn't come with a bench. And so I got a chair that had a hard seat, a wooden chair, and on the bottom of the legs of the chair, I screwed additional pieces of wood in order to raise the height where it needed to be. Another thing you wanna be careful of is that if you are using a chair, that it not be like an office chair that has arms because you need to have the freedom to move your arms around when you're playing the piano. And if there are arms there, then that can restrict your motion or you can end up trying to play above them. Now let's talk about how far to sit from the piano. It's a little bit tricky because if you sit too close to the piano, you're gonna crowd yourself and then you won't really be able to move freely because your arms are bent too far. And if you sit too far away from the piano, then your arms will be quite straight, relatively speaking, and then you won't be able to really leverage your full body when you're trying to play, and it'll really be relying more on fingers and hand, and you won't be able to really use your back and larger muscle groups. So basically, when you play, you don't want your elbows to be in the way. So you want them to fall just slightly in front of your rib cage. To determine the correct distance to sit from the piano, here's a good general rule of thumb to try, no pun intended. Sit upright at the piano and make a loose fist with each hand and then extend your arms so that the flat part of your fist touches the fall board. And that should, for a lot of people, be a very good um, distance. You can see for me, my elbows are falling a little bit in front of my body, which is what I want. And so if I were here, if, this, if I were trying to play like this, I couldn't reach the fall board, and then my arms would be too straight. And if I'm here and I, I'm reaching the fall board without my arms getting straight, then that means I'm too close. So you sit at a distance where you have to straighten your arms and the flat part of the fist touches the fall board. To further determine how far to sit from the keyboard, play a fifth on the piano in both hands. We're gonna play C and G, and C and G here. And notice where your elbows fall. Do your elbows fall in front of your body or are they touching your rib cage? You can adjust this way, and we wanna sit upright. Don't just adjust by leaning forward and back, but actually adjust by shifting forward and back on your seat. Now, when you're sitting at the piano and playing the piano, you wanna have really good support from your core, from your diaphragm. You wanna be careful not to sit and just totally collapse your diaphragm. It's easy to do because we're sitting on a bench and it's tiring, right? So you wanna make sure that you're sitting in such a way that you're not totally collapsing your core. In order to get that support in your diaphragm, I have found that it's useful to perch on the edge of the bench and not sit too far back. If you're sitting far back here, it can be so easy to just collapse all in here. And so to find the optimal place to sit on the bench, what I recommend doing is look at your bench and then find the halfway point between the front and the back, okay? So here's the halfway point. And then you actually wanna sit halfway between the halfway point and the front of the bench. Okay, so basically a quarter of the way back. And what I, when I sit there, I feel the edge of the bench 
pretty far up my thighs. And then that will help me to avoid slouching and collapsing the diaphragm, which will really help me be supported as I play the piano. Now, a really important component of sitting at the piano is to support. And this is what I like to call finding a tripod of support. And the idea is that when you sit at the piano, you, your weight is going to go down into the bench that you're sitting on through your sitting bones which are at the base of your spine. There are two bones at the base of your spine that you sit on. And you can feel them if you kind of rock from side to side on the bench. You can feel the sitting bones there. Sometimes they're also called the sits bones. Now that's only one third of the tripod. That's one leg of our tripod. The other two legs of the tripod that we want to support with are the two feet. And so put both feet on the floor and have the feet be hip width apart and perceive this triangle that you're creating between your sitting bones and your two feet. And so what I want to do is lean back a little bit and you'll feel your weight come onto your sitting bones and come off of your feet. And now go to the right, like we're making a circle, kind of a counterclockwise circle. And now what I'm doing is I'm shifting my weight into my right foot. Do you feel that? It's shifting away from the sits bones and it's going into the right foot. Now, if I go across over here to the left, then I feel the weight briefly on both feet, right? The two front legs of the tripod that we're creating here. And then now shift your weight over to the left. You'll feel the weight go into your left foot and then come back around and you'll feel the weight shift back onto your sitting bones. And so when you're sitting at the piano, you want to feel your weight as the default, basically balanced between these three points. You'll feel your weight going into the piano bench and then you'll feel the support of both feet. Now, of course, we pedal. And so we don't have the right foot flat on the floor most of the time. And so what you want to do is feel that support through the heel of your right foot as it sits on the pedal. Using this concept of distributing your weight between this tripod of your two feet and your sitting bones is a way to really ground yourself while sitting at the piano and using your seated position to help support you as you play. Since we're talking about how to sit at the piano, I want to briefly mention the Alexander Technique. And the Alexander Technique is a whole way of body movement that focuses on alignment of the spine and posture. And musicians find it very helpful when it comes to having a healthy physical approach to the instrument. When I was in graduate school, I took several years of Alexander Technique lessons and it really helped me with regard to playing the piano. So I just throw that out there in case you have an interest in finding somebody in your area who teaches the Alexander Technique to help you find better posture and general comfort and ease playing the piano. Now let's take a moment to talk about pedaling and the pedal foot. This is often overlooked when people talk about sitting at the piano, but that's an important part of sitting at the piano because our heel is on the ground and we need to have a healthy understanding of how that foot is going to operate. I think people tend to be aware of the fact that piano keyboards come at, you know, in a different heights and that it's important to adjust the height of the bench with relation to the keyboard. But it's often overlooked that the pedals are varying heights off the floor, depending on what piano you're playing. Because I was genuinely curious, I took my trusty tape measure and I went around our music building to measure the height of the pedals on six different pianos. For each piano, I measured the distance from the floor to the pedal. You can see here that they ranged in height from one and a quarter inches or 3.2 centimeters to three and an eighth inches or 7.9 centimeters. That's a huge range. And so sometimes there will be a problem with the pedals actually being too high up off the floor. And what that does is it forces the foot to operate at a steep angle and that can cause pain all the way up the leg. What you want to do is have your foot at an angle that isn't too extreme 
so that you're not using your whole foot to go up and down and up and down and cranking, but that you're just having to flex a little bit to make the pedal go down. If your pedal's too high off the ground, then there's a simple solution, which is to get a board. It could be a quarter inch, a half inch, three quarters of an inch, depending on how high you need it to be, and just put it under the pedal. So you put your heel on the board and then you can just pedal at an angle that is not so extreme for your ankle. I have done that over the years. I've had pianos that the pedal was just too high and I put a board on the floor and it was no problem at all. I was able to adjust that angle. So if you are finding that you are either working way too hard to crank that pedal or your leg is getting tired, especially like in the front, like on your shin, then that's an indication that you can experiment with trying to put something under the pedal in order to make the angle of the ankle less extreme. When you pedal at the piano, you really shouldn't have to move your foot very much at all. It's a subtle motion. Position your foot so the ball of your foot is on the pedal, not the tips of your toes and not the middle of your foot. You're not gonna wanna like lift up this way. And you notice that it really only takes a small amount of movement to put the pedal down. Also, just I'm gonna throw this in, I'll do another video at another time about pedal technique, but when you pedal, you want to have the ball of your foot being the point of contact, as I just said, but also you wanna keep your foot in contact with the pedal. You wanna avoid this kind of pedaling. Notice that I'm making a space between the pedal and my foot every time. First of all, that's super noisy, but second of all, your foot is moving a lot more than it needs to, and that can cause fatigue like all the way up in here, the top of your foot, and then up your leg. So try to find this optimal angle where your foot isn't forced to play the pedal at this crazy angle and then push way down like that. And if your pedal is too high for your foot, simply putting a board underneath the pedal to support your heel will help find that correct angle of the foot. When you sit at the piano, it's important to relax all the places where you don't need to hold tension. It's amazing where people hold tension. I mean, we're playing the piano here, but you can feel tension in your thighs, in your jaw, in your neck, in your shoulders, and those do not help you play the piano better. And so it's really good to get into the habit of going through what I call a relaxation checklist while you're sitting at the piano in order to be able to be nice and relaxed and play with more ease. So I'm gonna run you through my relaxation checklist. This can be helpful to do as a kind of a warm up before you start practicing until it starts to become automatic not to tense these muscle groups. First, start off by loosening your jaw. A lot of people, myself included, tend to clench their jaw while playing the piano and this doesn't get you anywhere playing the piano. So make that a habit when you sit down at the piano to just check in and make sure that your jaw is nice and loose. After you've checked in with your jaw being loose, you can focus on having a loose neck. One way to loosen it is to just do a few circles. Kind of, I don't go all the way back because that's back bad for your neck, but going uh, three quarters of the way around, like to the left, forward, to the right, and then over to the left, forward and the right, and then the other direction. That's a way to really help loosen your neck and make sure you're not holding excess tension. Another big place of tension for pianists is in the shoulders. When you're sitting at the piano, it's very, very important to check in and make sure that your shoulders are free and loose in the shoulder girdle and that you are not raising them while you're sitting at the piano. One thing I like to do when loosening the shoulders is simply to raise them to the ears Feel how high they are and then let them drop. And then you'll probably notice that they will drop to what feels like a lower place than they were before you raised them. Then the next place you wanna look for tension is in the elbows. Okay, so if you flap them to the side like a duck or make circles with the elbows, that's a really good way to loosen up the elbows. And then the wrists kinda of go with that too, right? So we wanna have nice loose wrists and be able to do wrist circles and arm circles in all the directions. And last but not least, so many pianists hold tension in their thighs and legs. And I think it has to do with people bracing themselves or trying to hold themselves upright 
by balancing only on their sitting bones or something, but there's just often a lot of tension in legs and thighs. And so really bring your attention to that area and release any excessive tension that is sitting there because that is not gonna help you play the piano better. You wanna maintain a connection all the way down your leg to your feet to get that tripod that we were talking about earlier. To learn more about how to play the piano with good alignment from your fingertip all the way to your shoulder, you're gonna wanna watch this video here because in that video, I talk about how to line the arm up behind the fingers in order to promote a good hand position, good arm position, and ease at the piano. I'll see you there. Good luck with your sitting position at the piano and happy practicing.